So you've just watched the latest keynote of the next thing that you're going to buy, and they've just told you that you can order today, or you can pre-order all four new models of iPhone 13 family this Friday. And there you go. You've just bought the latest iPhone. Now flash forward 12 months, and now you're seeing another keynote, but this time it's for the successor to the latest and greatest phone that you bought only 12 months ago. So let's take a look at the new iPhone. Has your phone already become outdated? What do you do? You trade in, buy the new phone because it's better than your phone just because they say so with all their fancy graphics about its performance, efficiency and power. This isn't just confined to Apple. This isn't just confined to the iPhone. All manufacturers do the same thing for all of their products that they refresh regularly. Whether that's your phone, a tablet, watch, computer, all the marketing is the same for all of them. But are they really wanting you to upgrade your device every year? It's a common misconception that many people have when they watch the yearly keynotes from companies like Apple, Samsung and Google showcasing their new phones and computers where they show off their shiny new devices with fancy features and impressive specs and make you feel like you need to upgrade your old ones right away. But do you really need to? Are these presentations really aimed at convincing you to buy the latest and greatest gadgets every year or are they targeting a different audience altogether? The answer might surprise you. These presentations are not primarily designed to sell to existing customers who already have the previous generation of devices, but rather to potential customers who have older or different devices or who are in fact new to the market. In other words, they are not trying to make you upgrade your phone or computer every year, but rather make you switch from another brand or platform or enter a new category of products. Showcasing the iPhone 14 range isn't really aimed at people who previously bought one of the iPhone 13 range because the jumping features from this iPhone 13 Pro to its successor in the iPhone 14 Pro isn't that big, so I wouldn't benefit that much from grading. But I may think otherwise if I've been on a 24 month carrier contract with an iPhone 12 Pro that ended on the release of the iPhone 14 Pro, then there's that progression and actual upgrade cycle. I may also have an iPhone that is older than that and isn't now supported by the latest iOS upgrade, then the need to upgrade is there. Or I could have an Android phone wanting to make the switch to Apple. Everyone upgrading and buying their next gadget will generally fall into one of these three scenarios. But why is that? Well, there are several reasons. One is that the market for smartphones and high value personal devices is becoming more saturated and competitive, meaning that there are fewer new customers to attract and more existing customers to retain. They've got to entice the new customers with something that's going to make them switch. And with the existing customers, they've got them already. And all they need to do is just give them something that's going to make their experience better. And this is something that Apple does really well with their ecosystem. If you've got one of these, then Apple might think that you should have one of these to enjoy the sounds exactly how they think it should sound, or watch those videos on one of their own displays because that's how they think it should be watched. Apple have created a uniform, coherent user experience because all of their products and services integrate so well with each other, meaning that existing customers are just going to buy more things that make it more convenient. It might not be upgrading your phone every year, but maybe getting those AirPods because you haven't got them and because it just works, or in the future, that Vision Pro, because it means that you're going to get a familiar experience that you're used to, but presented to you in a different format. The ecosystem that many other manufacturers are trying is currently probably the envy of those manufacturers who have and are attempting their own versions of the ecosystem, just to be able to try and gain an advantage and have that loyal customer base that uses the single brand. Another reason is that technological innovation is slowing down, meaning that there are going to be fewer breakthroughs and more incremental improvements in each generation devices. Just like me deciding whether or not to upgrade to the iPhone 14 Pro from this, and if you haven't watched that video, check that out here. And another reason is that it's the cost of upgrading is increasing every year, meaning that customers are more reluctant than ever to spend money on new devices that offer only marginal benefits over their old ones. So what does that mean for you as a consumer? It means that you should be less concerned by the generation to generation improvements and more by improvements over multiple years and generations. It means that you should not feel pressured to buy a new device every year, but rather to buy one when you feel like your current device is no longer meeting your needs or expectations. And it means that you should compare different devices not only based on their features and specs, but also on their value and longevity. Of course, this does not mean that you should never upgrade your devices or that you should ignore the new products that come out every year because who doesn't enjoy watching keynotes without going, wow, I wish mine did that. There might be some cases where upgrading makes sense for you, such as your device is broken or outdated, or if there is a new feature or service that you really want. 
I thought I wanted and needed the dynamic island, but thankfully that phase calmed down. And there might be some cases where you are genuinely impressed or excited by a new device and you want to reward yourself or treat yourself with something nice, and that's perfectly fine. But the point is, don't let the hyper-marketing influence your decision too much. Don't let them make you feel like you have to buy something that you really don't need or want. And don't let them make you feel like you're missing out on something. Just remember that phone that you got before, it's still going to be awesome. And remember, these presentations are not aimed at selling to you, but someone else. And you're not someone else, you are you. And you know what's best for you. So, the next time you hear... You can pre-order both models on September 9th, and they will be available on September 16th. Then remember, you don't have to buy it unless you want to. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something new. If you did, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more tech related content just like this. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let me know what you think about whether there is a need to upgrade every year. Do you agree or disagree with my analysis? Do you upgrade your devices every year or not? And why? I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.